Hey everyone! As you can see here, I have a copy of Stuart Kaplan's newest RWS deck, Pamela Colin Smith's RWS Tarot deck. Um, this was dropped Thanksgiving week of 2020, and there was like no fanfare whatsoever. It just appeared like manna from the heavens, and I am very pleased to have it here in front of me today. I thought what we could do with this deck today is obviously end up doing a flip through. Like, that's what we're all here for, of course. Um, but I thought it'd be kind of neat to talk a little bit about like where this falls, like in publication, history-esque, um, some of the details of the printing, marketing decisions, whatever, right? Um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So let's dive into that. Um, first off, I do have to say that I really wish that they would have called this deck anything other than Pamela Coleman Smith's RWS Terra deck. Maybe it's a brilliant marketing move and I'm just not seeing it. I can see that in the future, if you Google Pamela Coleman Smith and RWS Tarot, this deck might be one of the top choices. That could potentially be like the long-term outcome here. But for right now, when you Google these terms, you're gonna come up with a bajillion other things. Heck, like, as we all know, Los Garbeo does have three decks, three different decks, all in kind of the same box, that essentially share this name, Pamela Colin Smith, RWS Tarot, right? This could have been more unique. It could have maybe driven some more um, interest and traffic other than, oh, just another RWS Tarot deck. But, I don't know. There's a reason I didn't go to school for marketing. I went to school for English and biology. A great combination. So, um, this particular deck I do think was the, the packaging and everything that has been created for it, I do actually quite like. This type of grayish green teal slatey color is just, mm, it's perfection. It's one of my favorite colors of all time. Um, I would probably paint this on every room of my house if I could. Um, I do think that they are trying to make this packaging kind of dovetail the centennial in some ways. Um, the coloring, you know, having a greenish box, it makes it kind of similar. Having the same font also kind of makes it similar. Um, the font choice might just be because it looks kind of like an Edwardian font and this is an Edwardian deck, but it also makes these two decks kind of look like they go hand in hand. Um, I do like how the new deck um, uses some of Pixie's actual art from the deck on the cover. I've always been slightly perplexed as to why um, they've persisted in having this um, painting of Pamela Coleman Smith's um, on the cover of the Centennial Edition. I guess it kind of made a little bit more sense in the boxed edition. Um, where you actually, you know, get some packaging with, you know, more stuff from Pamela Colin Smith. Um, but in just the tuck box basic, it feels less relevant. But that's definitely been rectified here. And I think that the choice to have Temperance on the front was genius. Um, in the first place, this, you know, reddish color goes super well with the greens that are everywhere else on the deck. And, you know, really makes it prominent. Um, in the other place, it's an angel, right? And angels and all things woo-woo go hand in hand. And if you were a person who was <clears throat> interested in tarot and wanted an Ardelius deck, because all the books recommend that you have an Ardelius deck to learn from, um, that this would be a deck that would look less intimidating because of the incorporation of angels and so much of Western society does have like this Judeo-Christian background in some capacity. Like I can see where it would make it look a little bit more approachable. So well done. Uh, the back of the box just has a sample card of the High Priestess. Um, I'm not entirely sure why the High Priestess, right? Um, I think that kind of undoes <laughs> the softening with the angel because um, she does not look terribly non-esoteric but there's that. Um, I, if I had been designing this, I probably would have continued to go with The Fool. US Games has a really great history of featuring The Fool on the cover. Um, the Fool's been a part of um, university books. It's been part of the yellow, well, not really part of the yellow box, um, but 
yeah, I would have probably gone with the Fool. Um, other stuff on the packaging, the one thing we can really see is that they are totally touting um, these soft new colors as a primary feature of this particular deck. And that even comes right down to the packaging. Like this is a very soft color, a soft green compared to the, you know, well that's black, compared to, you know, the more forest green, I guess, of the Smithwaite Centennial. Um, so we've got the soft new colors on that side. Here we repeat that information. RWS Terra presents the beloved 1909 artwork of Pamela Coleman Smith in a new palette of soft, subtle colors framed with ivory parchment borders. Oh, so pretty. Um, so yeah, it's the soft colors that's really kind of the selling feature of this particular deck. And they are soft. All right. You can see that everything has just been muted out, right? Everything looks a little on the grayer side, less intense, right? Um, to be honest, I think that all that was done was base files of scanning the 1909 cards that Stuart Kaplan has um, were then desaturated pretty much blanket wise in Photoshop. It all looks to be about the same desaturation level, at least to me, I don't know. Not like I'm a technical genius on this stuff. All right. Boop. And let's just plot the centennial real quick so you can kind of see what I'm talking about as far as desaturation. Do that. All right. <clears throat> now, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure it's fair to put the centennial next to this one to talk about desaturation because the colors... Um, are slightly more yellow across the board in the Centennial than they are anywhere else. Um, there is this like yellowing effect that's put over the whole image, even in through the borders here, um, that you just don't see on other copies. Um, let's, let's pull out let's pull out the 1909 Art Restoration in the study deck real quick so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. All right. Um, take a look at our little dogs, right? This card here is the Centennial deck. This card's the 1909 Art Restoration deck. Yes, these are both more ivory than like anyone being a pure white, but this one's a lot more of a yellow than this one is here. Um, study deck really amplifies that, right? And study deck, like there was next to no Photoshopping done Right here, you can even see that there's actually a slight red tone, um, whereas here it's yellow and here it's more of a base ivory, right? But the Centennial is definitely a yellower deck overall than anything else, um, as far as that all goes. So I don't think it's necessarily a fair thing to say that this is a desaturated Centennial, um, because I think Centennial has that filter over it. However, it is a desaturated 1909, and it is definitely a 1909. Um, let's see what else we got going here. Um, I do think that the desaturation is kind of like the big selling point of this deck. I know that a lot of people don't like the Pamela Coleman Smith decks because of how yellow they are. Yellow is a color that Honestly, we're kind of like biologically hardwired to have a mistrust over, I guess, if that makes any sense. Um, it is a color that you can see the best. Out of all the other colors in the spectrum, it's the yellow that we can see the best. Um, think about all the highlighters that are yellow, right? Um, caution signs here in America, they're yellow, things like that. You can really see those um, very clearly. School buses, yellow. Um, it's hard to miss that type of stuff. Um, so it really does scream at you. In addition to that, we are also kind of wired to be a little cautious of it because there's a lot of things out there that pose some form of danger that have yellow coloration. Specifically yellow-black. Yellow-black is a really strong danger-danger uh, color combination. Um, and honestly, these cards do have a lot of yellow and they do have a lot of black. Um, 
So there's that. So I think that because of all that like deep psychology, deep evolutionary bias, um, there are going to be plenty of people who just can never make a connection with Pamela Coleman Smith deck because it is just so yellow. And the new deck definitely gets rid of that. Um, with the desaturation, there's no strong yellows to really get offended by. Um, I think a few people have said that it makes the deck a little bit boring, and I don't necessarily think they're wrong in that. Um, but it does make it very easy to look at. It's not anything that you're ever going to get like hyper offended by. So that can be a, a big strength. Um, it is, I think, a better um, reproduction of the 1909 than the Centennial is in some ways. And in some ways, I think it's a worse one. Um, the Centennial deck is actually one of the best mass market historical decks that you can get, but they did take some liberties with Photoshop. Um, and it's not like hyper obvious, so it's it's not anything bad. But as we can see here, there's this line, this black line that's been added that kind of just follows down from the magician's robe here. That line doesn't exist in any deck. Um, this is something that someone added here. And as you can see, it's missing here. The, the red just kind of trails off. In fact, here the red's brought in a little bit more than I've seen any other deck. Um, here is the 1909 art restoration, right? We can see that there's no line there. Here's the study deck. Oops. Again, no line here. We can also see on the Centennial, which is this middle card here, that they've kind of photoshopped all the blue out of this center part of this rose. See, look at all the blue that's kind of in here and in here and even in here. All right, we can see a little bit more blue. So there were some touch-ups done here and there throughout Centennial, and I don't disagree with them. I think that it does ultimately make the card, that is not the right card. I think that it does make the um, deck look a little bit more attractive as a unit, but it does kind of take it away from historical accuracy a few shades. I don't see any of those types of photoshops um, repeated here in the new 1909 deck. And <clears throat> that leads me to think that what they did was they took the base files um, of the scans after that they used maybe to create the Centennial um, and then took those base files and desaturated them. It doesn't look like hardly anything else was done to this deck. In fact, there are a few cards where you can even see staining. Well, there's the one where you can see a bunch of, look at all that like white stuff. And I know that, I know for a fact that this card, all that background stuff was kind of muted out. Like, right. You can see that a lot of it has been kind of kept, but made less obvious, right? On the Centennial. Um, but then there's just flat out staining. I probably should have pulled out a couple cards. Here, right? You can see all these little stain spots, right? Kind of like grease splatter or water splatter. These are like really obvious right here. And those have been edited out of the Centennial for sure. Let me pull out that. Right. And you can see the Centennial. All those stains are gone. Right. So, yeah. So if you wanted something that was a little bit more authentic, um, a little less retouched than the new deck, this RWS um, desaturated deck, 
I think it actually does a really cool job. Um, I do think that everyone in the deck looks like they've lost 10 pounds. Um, if we take a look at the borders here, all the borders are really uniform, um, which means that someone has um, gone through and made all the cards a standard size. What that does is it changes the aspect ratio on a lot of cards. Pamela Coleman Smith did not make these cards like you know, did not make these images necessarily uniform size. Uh, for instance, Strength is a lot skinnier and longer than pretty much every other card in the Major Arcana. Um, let me take a moment here and find something with a round thing. Let's do Wheel of Fortune. All right. Okay, there it is. Right. So here's the Wheel of Fortune on the new card and on Centennial. Do you see how much more of a football shape the wheel is here compared to here, right? Um, and do you also see how much bigger the white borders are here compared to the Centennial? And Centennial also has like skinnier borders on the sides than it does on the top or the bottom. Here, the borders are practically uniform all the way around, which is something that a lot of people do look for. A lot of people don't like the ununiform borders, but that does skew the proportions from how Pamela Coleman Smith originally drew them. Uh, this is my PMD. All right. I guess it is a second edition, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> um, but we can see here that this is a much rounder wheel than... Um, the new card, all right? So as far as the historical reproduction goes, it is changing aspect ratio um, on pretty much all the cards. And I'm just mixing up all my decks here. It's changing the aspect ratio on all the cards and it's um, desaturating. That's the word I'm looking for. It's desaturating all the colors. So that is something to be aware of. Aside from those two things, however, I think this is a pretty great representation of a 1909 deck. Um, particularly if you wanted to see a different 1909 deck in its untouched glory compared to like Saskia Jansen's copy or something to that nature. So yeah, that I guess is about all I got to say about the Pamela Coleman Smith RWS deck. Um, so let's just bring the camera in a little bit and do a quick flip through. All right, so it looks like we're all ready to flip through this deck. Um, I did forget to mention um, that Stuart Kaplan and US Games has taken off the copyright that you can usually see right here. Um, here is, again, the Centennial. There's a copyright right down here. That is now gone on this new deck. Where it is, is along the sides of the swords here on the back, right? Um, the back is also kind of a neat little design. It's continuing the tradition of stealing elements from the cards themselves and putting them kind of almost like clip art somewhere on a card back. Um, this is the Centennial back. They've taken Pamela Coleman's signature from a card, blown it up. Um, this is also the rosette from Death, the flag on Death, I believe. Um, it's not an unattractive back. I actually quite like it, but it is just taking some elements and popping them on Photoshop wise. At least this one is rotational. Um, this one isn't exactly like rotationally symmetrical. So when you flip it upside down, it is going to look slightly different from when it's right side up. This one is reversible, no problem. So there we go. All right, so let us commence with our flip through. Everyone really on this deck has lost about 10 pounds. Thanks to the squish.
I have to say, I like the cardstock an awful lot of this. It's a little thinner than the Centennial. Um, a little thinner. It's a good bit thinner than the, than the Centennial. But um, it's got a nice snap to it. And I know that it would ripple shuffle beautifully. All the colors are there, they're just desaturated. So this could definitely be a great deck to study with if you are someone who is annoyed by all the bright colors, the bright blues, yellows of the contemporary deck. Um, if you don't mind some of the staining, which I say bring it on, like it, it's authentic, right? Here's another card where you can see a fair bit of staining up in through here. Um, but I think it looks great. This is another one that has a lot of stains all over it. Man, that one just wants to slide, doesn't it? And there's the deck. Thank you so much for, you know, going through the slip through with me. And I hope you enjoy your day. Bye, guys.